your attention please. I know everybody's busy and there's plenty of time uh, to carry on conversations. But we have just got a couple of uh, short presentations and that lunch. Uh, so if you'll bear with us on that, I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you want to get close, just come around the, the, to the, the side there. Uh, I'm delighted that, uh, it's a bit of an impromptu appearance, but uh, we're delighted that Gary Hulican is uh, going to do a bit of a Q&A with me. Uh, I'm old enough to remember Gary playing, uh, started watching Oldham in 1967, which was probably about three or four years before Gary started his career. But he. He was, he's Oldham's longest serving player, played for Oldham for getting on for nearly 20 years. There were a few injuries along the way. Uh, and uh, he's also involved in a very uh, good cause, which he'll tell you about himself in a minute. Uh, but I'll just uh, ask Gary just to reminisce about his days at Oldham. Uh, and we can remember when uh, Jimmy Frizzell was Oldham's manager, and he used to live in the semi detached house just outside the ground. And we were trying to think if there were any managers in the first or the championship of the Premier League and they were close to the ground as that these days are very much down to. But what are your memories of the 70s and 80s? Oh, I, I, I'm very fortunate. I played with some fantastic players over the years. Two fantastic managers in Jimmy Frizzle and Joe Royal. Um, I made my debut here when I was 17 and like you said I, I had a few injuries over the years but I fought back and, 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 and enjoyed the time there, really enjoyed it. And I certainly miss it now. I miss that big wage back in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Oldham has always been renowned as a bit of a family club, and uh, I think that's where it's always been, hasn't it? It's always had a, a family feeling. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot here now, Alan Hardy. I think he's older than the ground. He's been here, there, <laughs> it is, a long, long time, and it's people like that, they keep the place going, they keep on its toes, and they look after the youngsters. And uh, what do you think of uh, the, 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 this day and age? When, when you played, there wasn't such a big gap between what players earned, and uh, you're a local lad. Nowadays, there doesn't seem to be that connection between the players and the town. Oh, no, no, I think that, you see him kissing the shirts now, and I don't, I don't, I just sat with a pinch of salt. I mean, years ago, these lads, but at football clubs and he was there a long time. I think I don't think you'll ever see what's happened to me again in football. You know, I was here probably 17 years or something and uh, you're not going to see that with, 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 the, with the new age player. But obviously you were here nearly 20 years, but Oldham had two managers over, I think, Alan, I think around 30 years. Uh, that would, I can imagine that now. Uh, Frizzell was here for nearly 20 years and then Joe Roller was here for nearly 20 years. Oh, they're, they're great. I mean, we, we, we had a benefit match from my grandson because we had a, a big tragedy. My lad got murdered uh, two years ago, which has been an absolute horror, horror story. And Joe very kindly come down and manage uh, uh, the side, the charity side for me. Um, no hesitation at all. And this is the way it is. These fellas are the, the legends. You know, they're, they're really top. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that, uh, you've got a, a charity now, uh, Football Against Knife Crime. And there's a big event coming up next year here at Boundary Park that uh, we'll, we'll be supporting through the Football Trade Directory. Uh, if you just want to tell us the date of that and what that's about. Yeah, it's May, it's after the last game of the season on the Saturday, it's May the 5th. It's all been booked in. It's up here at the Boundary Park. Um, it is May 11th, which is probably 20 players, but they're all Paul's goals playing the last one. and. A lot of big stars, a lot of big names. Mike Sweeney off the radio, and it's against the Jet Two All Stars, who are Coronation Street, Brookside, all actors. Absolutely fantastic. What a great turnout we had at Hyde last year. Unfortunately, we couldn't have it because the ground was um, dug over. But we have it here this year. Yeah, so as I said, we'll be supporting that, so we'll be sending out some information for Gary uh, over the coming weeks and months. Uh, and obviously, we don't urge anybody to support that good cause. Uh, as uh, Gary son was tragically uh, killed in the stabbing incident there in Middleton, as he said. Uh, so, as I said, it's short and sweet. Uh, we're delighted Gary's here. Uh, he's a legend. I can remember when he had real ginger hair, <laughs> and he was down here. Uh, and I'm now grey and I had long back hair. So, uh, but it's a pleasure that he took time out to come and see us. Uh, and I'm sure. He's Bring back many happy memories coming back to Belgium. 
begun for Gary, please. This is the first uh, Harris, who uh, one of our main long-serving partners, um, due to sponsor the event at Stoke. But uh, Carl, uh, who was doing the presentation there, unfortunately got taken ill. So we've sort of uh, dropped him in today so he can do that presentation. So uh, I've seen Carl before, yeah, you won't be disappointed. Uh, big on for Carl from Harris, he'll tell you all about them. And I'm sure it won't be too long. Good morning or good afternoon. I realise that you're all now desperate for lunch, so I will hurry through this as quickly as I can. Hopefully the technology will work. I've had a few issues on technology this morning, but I've got an able assistant. So I'd like to thank you. Right, Harris, uh, quite a background, a 40 year history. Some people here at Alden know us as Broughton Controls. We were an Alden based business established by Eric Broughton. We're now owned by Heras. Heras is a brand name that's very much known and established within fencing, but we do incorporate within that a range of solutions. So it controls pedestrians, controls vehicles, we produce it. And I'm going to take you through the slides, you can read those as I'm discussing with you. We've got experience of across lots of stadia applications, as in horse racing, football, rugby, motorsport, both static and temporary solutions. That's the aim of the business, to be recognised as Europe's premium perimeter protection brand. And that's proven by our commitment, expertise and reliability in, in the stadium. We've completed over 68 installations. Um, so if anybody wants to name a club, at any point it's highly likely that if they're in the Football League, they have encountered Heras, Broughton or G-Equip in its previous names. <coughs> We're owned by CRH. Um, CRH operate op often below the radar, not many people are aware of them. Within the UK, they own around 600 businesses, globally 3,100 businesses. Just to categorise what we offer, it's a range of entrance control solutions, detection solutions, and this has gone on auto, and don't worry, so that's PIGS, so perimeter detection, we are in Stadia, we offer a range of solutions, so you've got Stadia turnstiles, we do aesthetic hospitality, turnstiles, rolling shutters, a complete range that may be employed within a stadium or around the perimeter to protect against potential terror attack. And increasingly, and the reason I wanted to get involved in making a presentation is the great demand now for, for control within academies. Um, that's the big growth area where the investment is now within certainly the football league ladder, but also we find as you move down the ladder, it's a great revenue earner for smaller clubs. If they can offer community sports facilities or uh, align themselves to local educational facilities, there's investment and financial support available to them. So we finally arrive at the range of products. So we offer temporary fencing solutions. Um, if you want to manage something or a temporary facility, we had a conversation with one of the clubs here this morning. They adjust the fencing facility dependent upon the attendance, how many away supporters may be present. That's what it looks like. We have full height, solid, acoustic, pedestrian solutions that are portable, rapid, rapidly deployable. A range of railings. Um, you won't see many railings around football or even around academy solutions at the moment because obviously we're trying to obscure vision. Um, so the press can't just come up with a camera and just take a photograph and catch somebody inconvenienced like Jürgen Klopp who was caught with a cigarette in his mouth 18 months ago. Didn't go down very well. Uh, Peak side net, ball net fencing. We have a range of solutions um, in, in Muggers. Um, we've got a number of projects underway, but again within academies we see a big growth area. For the smaller clubs in the ladder, 
it's a solution that helps you generate additional revenue. We also do like railing, spectator railing alongside, so you can get create the right standoff from your spectators. Or indeed, in junior football, you've obviously got the protection regulations. Then we have a range of gates. What we see within academies and um, training facilities is the gate solution that doesn't allow visibility. Again, that's about preventing the press or our media just taking images uh, and catching people, potentially. Uh, you've got a range of speed gates. So this gate or here with the timber, that's at Manchester City Academy. Some of you may be familiar with that. Again, it's about obscuring vision. I'll touch on this. Harris Guard. Uh, some clubs want to manage um, security guards going around the stadium or protect assets within the stadium, such as a, a, a trophy or individuals. They can be tagged and they can be geofenced so that we can set alarms if everybody steps outside of that geofenced perimeter. This is our range of services, so we, we can tailor a solution for anyone who's interested, do as much or as little as required. We do like to build relationships with customers, and that's continue servicing and repairing equipment, and build a relationship for life. I'm nearly there, you can almost get your lunch. I'm just edging on there. And these are our qualifications. So we've all the right accreditations in any industry, and if this was geared towards uh, the rail industry or water industry, again, we have all the right accreditations. That's the end of the presentation. I'd like to thank you for listening. I'd like to thank John for giving me the opportunity to present to you. I hope it didn't go too long, and I hope you now enjoy your lunch. Thank you.